is an Auburn Network production. A pair of true freshmen in the Auburn backfield to give to Cooper. Cooper broke away. 15-10. Cooper up the middle of the five. He's in. Touchdown, Auburn! One, two, three, four. Oh, we got a begun defense you got to go with a shutout and we, we hadn't seen a shutout right here a long time we hadn't seen a shutout right here a long time you know offense we got a little we got we we got to we got to get some corrections we got to get ready for the show we got some young guys got ready got to get ready for the big show and so the offense, you got to commit yourself, and, and, and everything is fine. But we we got to make some plays, relax, and we got to get ready for game day, for game day. A little bit of mess here, a little mess there. But man, there's a day when it, there, there was a time when people loved winning with a kick, defensive kicking game, didn't they? Hey, Jared Holmes, congrats! Welcome to Auburn, Jared Holmes. The defense, y'all just keep it on going. We'll pick it up and join y'all next week and see if we can get this thing to the team thing. This is the Auburn Football Review. The Tigers got it done the old-fashioned way Saturday night, kicking and defense on a 29 to nothing win over UAB. Coach Terry Bowden, uh, maybe a little disappointment in the offense, but uh, that field goal kicker's got to give you some confidence down the road. Well, you know, we sat there and wanted everything to look good, and but, you know, as I saw the first kickoff fail deep in the end zone, the standing ovation that I led, you know, I think <laughs> we saw that. We saw the shutout by the defense. And there's a lot of improvement we can make offensively. Maybe that's what we need because of all the things we needed to solve. We solved that, left some question marks there, but a win is a win. We beat Sanford my first year here, 35 to nothing. I'm not sure what that meant as we went undefeated. We beat Chattanooga 76 to 10 and came back to loss to LSU. I'm not sure what that meant, that score meant. It's a win. I think we're going to appreciate it. Now let's just get better until next week and take it from here. All right, let's go into the Auburn uh, dressing room now, and we'll begin with the man of the hour, place kicker Jarrett Holmes. Who's holding for you? Jeremy Seals. He did a wonderful job. Pretty fair hand, huh? Oh, yeah. Good snapping, good holding. Yes, sir. Brent Turner and Jeremy Seals, probably best, best in the SEC. This has to give you a load of confidence to, to uh, go into some of the big games. Yeah, this, this helps out a lot. I was, I was pretty nervous coming in with a uh, big crowd. Uh, but after I got my nerves out and after that warm-up, I kind of made the crowd disappear a little bit. You know, I settled down got back to my game plan. You know, when you go into the first game, you have to be real, real sharp. And, and we really know what UAB is going to do. And um, they didn't have anything. Better on defense, yeah, they, so. yeah, they didn't have anything to lose. They, they blitzed every play. I mean, they bring the house. And, um, and they was doing some things on defense. So um, I had to go off UAB. They was a good opponent. I think they're gonna win a lot of games this year. And we're just gonna get better. And um, you know, it, it's a win is a win. And, um, and you know, I threw 207 tonight. If I can eliminate that, that's just gonna better our chances to win more football games this year. Well, I just came off the end. Um, the, the front the front team put pressure on on everybody on the front, which made me get free. Got the ball. I believe that's two for you in your Auburn career. Huh? Yes, sir, it is. It felt really good. You know, we've been working on this block all week, you know, all during two a day, so it felt really good to block one. We just want to come out with being myself on the Penn State game as a defense. You know, unfortunately, our offense just can jail together and get it right. But by next week, we will, we will be together as a whole team and hopefully put some points on the board. Um, I think we're going to get better off this game right here. I think we learned a lot from this game, and um, we can only go, we can only get better from this. Uh, Trickett will have some things, some coaching points for Monday, won't he? Oh, sure he will. Oh, sure he will. We got a lot. We got a lot of things we got to do to get better, and uh, and I'm sure he's going to have a couple of drills for us come Monday. Okay, let's get right into the game. Not a typical August night. Rather cool, I would say, Coach. And, of course, Misty Field was in pretty good shape. It was. I mean, we've had a cool preseason. And again, we, we could have a hot week next week. We've got to be ready for that. But we came out again uh, early in the season. Boy, you go from that light, uh, light to the dark. There's always something you got to get used to. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
with seven freshmen, true freshmen on the opening kickoff. Kind of shook me up, but then when he kicked it eight yards deep, I felt a little better. Are those knowledgeable fans, when that ball sailed into the end zone, they <laughs> cheered mightily. Well, that's against, that was something we, we tried to recruit a difference. That's a nice little uh, draw they used off the half sprint, and it had some early success, but the defense comes up and gives us a three and out. Here comes and, a big play. And then watch Larry Melton here, who... Uh, uh, has found a way to help us right there. I, I'm so glad. You know, he went through a very frustrating year last year. The first big play of the season, a block punt, and if we could just scoop and roll it in there to the end zone, keep it going downfield, that would have helped. We come back. Uh, they stopped the reverse on the opening play. Here's a third and long. Beautiful pass. A little bit high. Uh, good catch by uh, Robert Baker. And had us down inside the five, but, uh, but we got to our short yardage goal line offense and didn't get in. And so we kick the field goal, the first of five for Jared Holmes. But you'd like that to be seven. I think the, the, yeah. the game would have gotten over earlier yeah. with a seven there with that turnover. Because we come back, we've uh, Marcellus let the quarterback break and tame. But number four, Jason Bray, seemed to be all over the field. Two blocks and several good defenses. Yeah, he really was 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 challenged all night. And for a redshirt freshman who came in and played, I thought he did a super job. Uh, uh, Fred Beasley, uh, I think 88 yards on 14 carries, had a good run there, uh, uh, a good solid night for all of our tailbacks and fullbacks. I think we have a, uh, we'll have some good uh, competition going on there. And another field goal, three over 46 yards. This was the first of the long one, 46 yarder, six to nothing lead, and uh, he is certainly uh, in a zone. He really has ball. been kicking like that well. There's a good, there's the fumble, there's the recovery there by Ryan Taylor, tackled by Marlon Taylor, uh, recovery by Ryan Taylor, and uh, gives us a good field position again, uh, but we do nothing with the uh, uh, the drive. Defense comes up and knocks several balls down a row. Big play there, and I think you'll see a big block field goal. Mm -hmm. uh, boy, I just, you like to see that. A lot of pride the defense is having and not uh, uh, giving up clutches. You'll see one right again, boom, knocks the ball down, almost intercepted. It was Mark Smith got his hand Mark on that Smith, one. Mark uh, Smith uh, pushing the, vet, the offensive lineman into the quarterback. You'll see the pressure up the middle. Here comes Jimmy Brumbo oh, inside. There it is. He's pushed the pressure there, and stay away from it. So the ball touches you. They covered. It gets to be that their ball. And the defense has come through again. The defense played well during this period, uh, the late in the first and in the second quarter, when uh, UAB had some things going offensively, and they never let them score. No, I think UAB had a, about 200 total yards on offense, and 50 of them came on one play. Mm -hmm. Where quarterback scrambled and made some play, but the defense, time and time again, you know, it's crazy. You, you, when a deep, when a team can't move the ball, it kind of goes into sleep. You, you become almost patient on offense a little more than you like. But we were committed to staying with a very uh, conservative game plan. Uh, unless we were in trouble, we came out to four wides a little bit, but stayed very conservative, and we did, and we, and we've got to get better offensively. But Martavius Houston, big interception there out of the end zone, stopped another drive by UAB. Took out a couple of guys on our bench. <laughs> That's right, ran through everybody. There's uh, uh, Tyrone Goodson had five catches, was our leading receiver last night with Willie Gauthier. We had to hold him out for one week as he completes some academic work from finals last week. Nice catch there. Uh, to pick up another first down by uh, Tyrone Goodson again. He played, he had some tough catches. Made Here's a 42-yarder, uh, another good field goal, and uh, puts us up 9 to nothing at the last play of the half. And not a, No touchdown scored, but with the defense playing like it did, you really, kind of a scary thing, is you knew the game really wasn't uh, uh, that close, but much too close for what you'd like. We'll be back in just a minute. Second half, you look like you uh, got in there and adjusted some of the, to some of their pass rush and that sort of thing, and and looked totally in control. The second half. Well, again, I think they got a little bit tired. I don't. I think we would have had to change a lot of what we were doing to really attack them in, in, in the proper way. But I think we they got tired. We were able to pick it up a little bit better. I think you'll see us move the ball much better. Here we go with the second half, and Auburn uh, gets the first possession and breaks a big run with Big Beasley. Well, the safeties, again, we, we, when, he, when you throw that little toss sweep in there, safety, he makes one false move, uh, and it really uh, uh, gives you a chance to make a big play. But again, the drive uh, stalls. We had some, you know, the thing we did, we have mentioned, we had some penalties, some 15 yep. yarders yep. in the game that uh, uh, a lot of those really hurt. You can't have those and be successful in a running attack. Another knock, ball knocked down right there by Marcellus Mostella. And, uh, you know, you look at the game, you say, well, Damon didn't have the game that you'd like him to have. He was 18 of 32, 50 for 6%. Mm -hmm. Their quarterback, who I thought really did fine, was 7 of 25 with about 25%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you really, uh, sometimes you have a misconception. It's that we expect such great things out of this young man right here. 
and the way he scrambles calmly for first down, you, you kind of want to just get that first down. He took a lot of hits. We're going to have to really get that straight. That's right there, another hit that you wish he could somehow pick that first down up and not get hit like that. There's the screen. Uh, and there's a nice run by Rusty Williams, who I think y'all see is it's going to be a very, very good mm -hmm. player. But Eric Hines Tucker behind Beasley and Rusty Williams behind him and Marquis Stoops behind him. We've got some young tailbacks. Here's the uh, field goal again to make it 15 to nothing. I was sitting there thinking that time. Five was, of those, baby. This is probably enough to win, but boy, you want to get a touchdown uh, <laughs> uh, on these guys. Boy, Kikio, that's a picture-perfect tackle. Just nose right in the middle of the guy's chest. And uh, did a fine job. There's the defense putting some heat on this guy. Throws one up for grabs, and you'll see, boom, there's the hit by Marlin and Ryan Taylor, the interception by Ricky Neal. And uh, defense is getting excited. Starting to get excited, starting to gain confidence, uh, and uh, giving the offense good field position. And they're going to cash it this time. First and 10 is 38 on this play. Well, we finally went to a little bit of a... a, a Wide open, little wide open offense and got the ball moved down. See, Damien's a little bit high. When you're a little bit high, I think it comes from excitement. Uh, receivers catch the ball with their feet off the ground. Boy, look at here. Sincade had a chance to pop it through his one open <laughs> hole, but he's going to do a fine job. You'll see his speed at fullback come to come out right a lot of times. Of course, Eric Hines Tucker, when you want to give Beasley a breather, he shows some good speed and explosion there uh, that will really help you. Same drive now as the fourth quarter begins at the other end of the field, and Auburn's about to take it in. There's the, de there's the defensive line. There's a good lead block by a good run by Eric Hines Tucker. T.J. Dunnigan giving him a big lift right there. And Leonard Thomas, the offensive lineman, Jesse McCovery, and all the offensive linemen excited uh, about that first score of the season. I almost thought it would never come, but it <laughs> finally got the touchdown, I mean. And boom, we, we kick off again. And Now watch how high this kick is that does not go in the end zone. That's some serious hang time. And then Tyrese Williams catching him a 14. Now, I don't know what the, the strategy is, but it seems to be the ball doesn't have to be kicked for some reason. Of course, I don't know what the defensive coach is about, but you notice the ball has not had to be kicked at one area. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's being kicked deep, kicked off deep. Big team to play. Ricky Neal again. I think he, he had, had a good day. Yeah. Had a good day. The linebackers had a good day. There's good pressure. Third and eight. Third and eight. Big tough stop. Hustling to the ball. Ricardo, Renardo Carson. Uh, Ricky Neal again. Uh, 95 is Renardo Carson. Our, one of our true freshmen playing. Uh, as, as old as we are compared to last year, we're still a very, very young team. There's a little shuffle pass. Now watch the speed of this fullback. Sin Cade's really a tailback playing fullback, but at 200 pounds, he can really scoot. I tell you, uh, made that into a big play. There's, uh, there's a, a two redshirt freshman right there. Here's another new name to get Rusty acquainted Williams with. Rusty Williams showing his speed uh, uh, as a 200 pound tailback that's the third teamer. And uh, uh, we like what he shows us and brings, and brings to the table with his ability. We get back in there, we got, get a, got, a, uh, got a screen coming out right here. Rusty Williams does a good job, almost breaks that one all the way, picks up a big first down on the screen there. Get an illegal uh, uh, motion penalty and move it back and uh, then get the uh, tip, tip ball. ball. Well, you know, Damien's opening debut had two interceptions. One was a, was a deep post that was open. He was afraid he was going to overthrow it, and he just threw it a little bit soft. That one was a tip ball. We all remember Pat Nix's opening game against Ole Miss in Oxford. Mm -hmm. Two critical interceptions. It's just a tough uh, first game, but boom. There's another good hit. Players flying around the football. So a lot of players flying around the football. Uh, and here's the final punt. Robert Baker takes the final punt. Of course, he's got such sure hands. If he doesn't, fair, if he didn't catch balls like this, we lose 20 or 25 yards yep, yep. on the roll. So he's not afraid to go get them. No, either. and you need to have that. You know, there'll be a time to let those things sit, but this wasn't one of them. Uh, John Cooley has come in, makes a nice opening pass to Jeremy Hand. Uh, Jerry makes a couple people miss and picks up nearly a first down. And I think now we're running a fourth team tailback. Uh, yep. Marquise Cooper right here. Pure freshman. Pure freshman can slide. This is the 155-pound freshman from Miami that we've all been waiting to see. He's lining up behind Telly Embry, uh, number 48 there at fullback. Uh, Telly's not that big, but next to Marquise, he looks like a big old fullback. He makes a nice run here for his the first, first down. opening college run. And uh, uh, now we're starting to see David Hill, a true freshman from fall in there. And there's what's Marquise here. They can't find him. They can't find him to see him. <laughs> and he scoots in for another touchdown. And uh, Telly's excited there. And there comes Jim, James Rowe, his first start. TJ, I love the way TJ Dunnigan gets excited. Uh, uh, Tyrone uh, Dillard. Uh, and another good score is that the way it ended up 29 to nothing. Because UAB again. Had nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, they played hard. They really played did. very hard. Went away with a good victory. Uh, uh, 
Uh, if they would have been able to been a little bit played it closer, I think we'd have had to open up and show a lot of things that we didn't do. And uh, let's wait till we we, till we to prejudge this offense mm -hmm. until we see how it does against uh, uh, some of the teams down the road. Okay, and Fresno State is the next team down the road. We'll be back to talk a bit about them in just a moment. Some of the uh, Fresno State uh, Oregon game uh, Saturday night. Uh, Fresno State had a chance to win the game, leading by three with seven to go, gave up a field goal, and then lost it in overtime. They scared me to death. You talk about an NFL-type quarterback, uh, very comfortable playing big teams, and uh, one, of the, one of the top five coaches in America over time, Jim Sweeney. Um, we've got to make great strides offensively. Our young defense will be put to even a greater test, and I think as far as strengths go, this is one of the strong uh, non-conference games that we've had since I've been here. And should be a big crowd. Remember, if it is a, a telecast on a pay-per-view basis, uh, you contact your local cable operator to get hooked up. And, of course, uh, the Auburn Network is on the air at 430, and we'll see you here next week for the Auburn Football Review. Thank you for watching. His hit right at the goal line, falls into the end zone. Touchdown, Auburn! One, two, one, two, three, four, four. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. That is effort. And that is going after it. That's offense and that's defense. Uh, defense, that's probably the first two back to back set we've had in a little over 10 years. A great job, defense. That's <laughs> And offense, that's what we had to do, isn't it? That's what we been. That's what we. That's what we held back last week. That was. That was what we kept away from everybody. That's what we took a little abuse in the paper for. But we made a million mistakes both sides of the ball. And that's what's great is that we're gonna get a lot better. We got to get a lot better because we 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 got the we got we got the stuff. But we can get a lot better because offensively we know we know the insides of our offense. We made a ton of mistakes. Defense every day you get better. But let me tell you what I love. The offense was feeding off the defense. The defense was feeding off the offense. One was pumping up the other. The other was pumping the other. Men, as a team now, that's somewhere we can go a long way with that. We can go a long way with that. And that kicking game, it's all together. I'm proud of it. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Terry Bounds. Welcome. The Tigers put it all together Saturday night at Jordan-Hare. 62-0 over Fresno State. Another great defensive performance and a statement out of the offense, Coach Terry. Well, it all goes together. I gosh, people just making plays on both sides of the ball, and we needed that. You know, when the conference comes up, we're probably not as good as we were last night, not as bad as we were against UAB on offense somewhere in between, but man, we got to rejoice in a victory like that. Damian Craig, uh, everybody uh, had a bad moment there early in the second half when he went down. Well, you know, coming, at, coming out, it was a situation where we wanted to get one series come out sharp, the muscle cramps got to him. I was talking to him, so I knew about it. Wasn't quite as worried, but if I hadn't known that, I'd have been worried too. He did a great job. Because the way he rolled up, it looked like it might have been a knee or something, but he's, he's fine, huh? Yeah, it's really good. How about the, the coach? Well, I got a pinched nerve. You saw me on the sideline giving it that one. I had pinched a nerve Thursday sleeping on my shoulder. And it's about to kill me, but I think I will recover and come off the disabled list. You don't have to go to the DL? Well, that's good news. <laughs> we'll be back in just a minute. Right now, let's go to the dressing room and talk to some of the players, beginning with backup quarterback John Cooley, who had a good night. Sitting on the bench for four years and felt good. Felt really good. Even though we went, it felt really good to play. So uh, next week, go practice even harder and get better because you never know what's going to happen to Damien. And uh, hopefully he's all right. And I just got to be ready to step in there and lead the team to victory no matter what the circumstance. Uh, you made some big runs tonight, but I like that early third down and two where you gutted it out and got that first down because the game was on the line. Man. Yeah, I mean, I, that, that's part of uh, running back mentality. You know, that's where the coach has and coach you. I mean, when it when it get down to the nitty gritty, you got to get, get, do what you can to get the first down, and uh, that's what I did. Like a lot of people always say, a lot of coaches always say, you always improve from your first game to your second game, and I think that that's what we did tonight. Heck, last week we sat her down, and we all got our assignments right. All it was is uh, you just know you got to know who to block. How'd you get three? Um, I just got around him. He he thought I was uh he thought he had um pushed me outside, and he didn't push me outside far enough. So then I just came in with all with all I had and blocked. Uh, me and Marcellus, Marcellus say we, was, we always have a raise to him who would get to him first. 
So it was a raise, one of the raises I won. We just knew we had to put him down and, you know, put a lot of pressure on the quarterback from the outside. And after that, you know, they didn't have a play. I thought I had the interception, but the receiver came on my back and the ball tipped in the air. And I just seen Brad going down the field. Brad, you were Johnny on the spot, huh? Yeah, well, he saved me. I really had messed up, so I just tried to get back, and then he had tipped it to me. Uh, well, we know that he's going to come out and pass a lot, so uh, we just uh, went out there, expect passing, and uh, got to the quarterback early. You know what's the hardest thing about making these Golden Flake commercials? Try not to eat all these delicious Golden Flake potato chips before we finish up. Here's to take five. Communication. We get into the game. Frankly, I thought Fresno State would be, I, I, I was surprised you were able to jump them as fast as you did. Well, I was too. I, the, what concerned me mostly was their offense. They are a very good offense. They score 30 points a game every year. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that concerned me. Uh, we just got to, we wore them down. We, the defense came out and wore them down. We got ahead of them. And we set the tempo. I think that was the key is that our team offensively and defensively set the tempo. And they could never recover. You know, if you score a lot of points like that, it forced them to throw every down. Mm -hmm. Boy, they play right into, into Coach Oliver's hands when he, he knows what they must do. He can cause a lot of problems. Great crowd again. Uh, Wonderful crowd. All our folks you, are showing up. I guarantee two non-conference teams, about 80,000 each night, and you can see the pressure putting on. Great Mark Smith putting the heat on them. It's so important to get a great rush out of four rushes. If you rush five or six, that's a blitz. Mm -hmm. Now, look at two outside guys. Now you got our two linebackers are now the end. So you see the third and long situation. Linebackers become in, safeties become linebackers, and corners become safeties. It's great uh, strategy for third and long situations. Key short yardage run here on third and Great three. run by Fred Beasley, and again, that's what you need. We're, we have a good mix of tailbacks, and Beasley with power, if they're throwing a, a Hines and a Williams and a, and a Marquise Cooper with speed and quickness. There's, look at this far hard, so those are two great short yard plays when the game was still, we had no That's idea right. what was going to happen. That's right. Uh, very, ple very pleased. We rushed for about almost uh, 250, 300 yards. And so I was very pleased with our rushing performance. Damien doing a lot of scrambling. And again, that's just something he does. He does scrambles well. I guess I think people are going to have to accept the fact they're going to be nervous every now and yeah. then when he's at quarterback yeah. because he throws for almost 80%, set a new uh, Auburn single game record for 79% completion. But he has the ability. Look at this fine run by Tyrone oh, Goodson for man. the touchdown. He carried the great fall preseason right into the game. He's had a great preparation and work as a junior. He had uh, seven catch for 119 yards, I believe, or even more, the most yards he's ever had. And uh, another good night. Defense again hitting that quarterback over and over again. Good coverage there by Ryan Taylor and uh, uh, Antoine Nolan. Third and long again. Got him where you want him. That's where you want him. Third and long. There's the big hit by Terry Solomon again. That quarterback is taking a beating. And again, your defensive secondary plays so much better when you get to that quarterback within a certain amount of time. And watch, Larry Melton. Larry Melton, who has you know, had to play a little second team this year in the secondary, comes on, blocks another punt. And these are both of these two games. He's done it early, mm -hmm. and it's set the tempo for the game. Those this are, time you cash it. We cash it in. Like last week we did not. Mm -hmm. This time it jumps us to 14 and to nothing because we come back with this. We, we're in our no huddle situation now, and there's a beautiful throw over the linebackers to Tyrone Goodson. And, when you can do the no huddle like we hadn't done before where you go from the eye formation to the uh, shotgun, it causes a lot more play. Watch this great run by Beasley here. That's as good a run there as, now as any of the 50-yard yeah. runs yeah. that we had yeah. uh, that night. And so he's did a That's he, tough running. You're tough right. running. When our, and there's the power to the quarterback sneak for the touch. Now, Fresno has some hot weather, but they do not have humid weather. Right. We really felt... And does that play into the... Oh, you know, yes. Plan? We felt like with a no huddle and keep, them, you know, keep our people substituting that we would wear them down, and that's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. They had a fine tailback at 150 yards against Oregon. But our speed had a lot. We had a little bit more speed and quickness than they had. Here's another third and long. Another third and long, and that's going to probably put them into, into some trouble. Beautiful interception there. I think that's Martavius Houston. Again, you're using safeties as linebackers, and they're a little quicker than most linebackers, and I think that's what's allowing us to be good. But stopping the play on first down is what's important. What is this? Another, another one of uh, uh, Jared Holmes' uh, tricks, a beautiful high kick from about the 40-yard <laughs> line. And he's Is doing this guy so many Superman things. Or he's, he's doing so many things well. And the great coverage by, uh, uh, by all of our, co our coverage people down there. And here's the big run. That back that did so well last week uh, made a good move, but 
That was a poor call. I, I felt bad. I don't feel bad for them. I just felt it was a poor call. The mm -hmm. ground made him fumble. We'll take it. Some days that'll go against us. Mm -hmm. Here's the toss sweep. We put the tight end back in. There's Beasley dipping in and, and sprinting out. Dip in and go under and go out. And he runs it in for a touchdown. And now I believe 21 and nothing. Mm -hmm. And uh, now you really set the, way, the stage where they have to throw the football. Now they've switched quarterbacks because uh, Arianas is just totally off his rhythm because of the, the, the rush. pass rush is so good. Beautiful and that's been one of the better interceptions I've seen by Marcellus Mostella. But it's the most discouraging situation. He makes the interception. We get a penalty to bring that back out. We throw an interception on the first play. Damien had one poor throw. Uh, uh, then John Cooley had the same poor throw. But we come back. Vic would have he would have loved this game. Oh, Vic, I tell you, they had to sign up for Vic, and he would have loved the high-scoring game. Yeah. Another good throw to, to Goodson. We get, we're mixing the balls around pretty good. I think we need to get the ball to Baker a little more, too. But we know you don't pick, watch this here. Now, when somebody says make a safety miss, if you, that a picture says a thousand words. That's when you say a, a back has to make a safety miss, that's what that <laughs> oh, is. Oh, boy. That, <laughs> that's a little Marquise Cooper, 5'6", 150. That little guy's going to be fun to watch. Eight carries it? for 110 yards, but he makes it, uh, makes it. you know, it's hard to sit on one guy. Great coverage there. Tyrese Williams there with Marcellus Marcella uh, staying around those, those backs. People closing on the ball once it's in the air. Damien's popping through there. That's what, that's what happens. If you go out there and try to play man coverage and don't cover the middle of the field, he's going to put the ball down to the 15. He got himself worn out. Do you, are you going to ask him to pace himself a little bit? Or? Well, I think humidity. I think, again, we have, we, see, we, we're, 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 he, he, he can do this for a whole game. He's athletic, and I'm not going to ask him to do I it. Mean, if he's a great player, I want him to have to be great, but the humidity is not going to allow him to do that. I mean, that mm -hmm. was just one of those games where, where we probably will uh, be able to use our second teamers, too, mm -hmm. a little more. Good pressure there. It's a good pressure. They got, they got, look at the pressure there by uh, mm. Solomon and Takeo and all the people running, the, the defensive players running to them. Uh, Pete Jenkins, Jack Hines, Joe Witt, along with Coach Aller, just had a great plan defensively. Our front really came up. Another fumble. Carson, the freshman, comes up. Bernardo there. Carson, another great job there. And now we've got the ball back on the 30. We roll out. Beautiful throw right here. Down the one yard line, right on the end zone. Now that's. That's no accident. They practice that play uh, on the side. Over and over run. again, they practice keeping that one foot down. There's Kevin McLeod on the uh, touchdown. Uh, you see the scoring and all the things going on. There were a lot of breakdowns offensively that when the no huddle, it goes so fast you don't see it. But we can get better. Look at this beautiful coverage. Does Jason Bray continues to make big play after big play? He, uh, he shows a lot of confidence, and uh, that's important in the secondary position. Here they come, pressure again in that quarterback's eyes. Ryan Taylor makes a big intercept there. Boy, I'll just pop out of bounds right there. But another good interception. And, and we haven't seen this since the 94 team where we intercepted the calls in 94, 93 like this. But we're seeing uh, defensive backs being in the right places and making the interceptions and, and, and to have a game like that. That's probably as good an example as you could uh, call for the offense and the defense feeding off one another. Well, I, like I say, it, it's exactly like that. You want a big play here, get the, uh, cause the people to get excited, have a big play over there, and... And, and, uh, and I mentioned that after the game of the players. It's so important because now you're, it becomes a team thing. It's not offense. It's not defense. It's togetherness. And I think that's what we're seeing. We'll be back in just a minute. Visit the, the Tigers head to Oxford, Mississippi this Saturday for their SEC opener against the Ole Miss Rebels. The Auburn Network will provide complete coverage. The Tiger tailgate show begins it all at 10 a.m. on Saturday morning. And looking ahead toward the LSU weekend in a couple of weeks, be sure to make your plans to enjoy the Spirit of Auburn Festival, which will take place at Beard Ease Memorial Coliseum. You'll be able to participate in interactive football games, visit with some of the past Auburn greats like uh, Terry Beasley, Zeke Smith, Pat Dye. Plus, there'll be lots of other activities for the entire family. The Spirit of Auburn Festival, September 20th and 21st at Beard Ease Memorial Coliseum. Coach Terry Bowden is back with the second half highlights in just a minute. Second half now, and uh, on the first series, Damian Craig uh, gets the cramps and has to leave, and uh, I, I guess you were really pleased with the way that John comes on and takes him right down the field. And yeah, John Cooley, see right there, we, 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 we like to come out with our first team one series the second half, but, you know, he, he began to cramp up, so John came in and led the first unit. Look at that beautiful screen pass. You love to effectively run the screen. It hurts the rush, slows down the rush. Fred making another good throw and catch. He throws and he runs and catches the ball well. The line block well. There's Victor Riley who got a start again. There's Jim Rowe. Rick Trickett's group did a great job. Another pass interference call. And again, you're seeing them trying to stop that 
that deep bend in route that we call a tube route. And there's a nice run, Beasley again, getting into that end zone uh, for the score. We stretched that last week at UAB, did not score. Mm -hmm. Get that ball north-south into the end zone. Good job blocking Jim Rowe, Leonard Thomas, uh, Tiger, uh, uh, Victor Riley, and Geno James. Jesse McCovery. Now here's the pressure again. Ricky Neal, uh, that other linebacker besides the keel right there. Ricky <laughs> Neal getting a good interception, and yeah. I'll be doing his thing. <laughs> Uh, Watch that cut right there. That is an unbelievable cut. That was yeah. a sweep to the left. He hits his plant foot, comes right back, and Rusty Williams is a one as a back that can make things happen. Eric Lowe getting a good block there. There's David Hill in his freshman uh, debut. Uh, caught a football. John Coley rolling out. Beautiful this has throw. To do John a world of good. Oh, throw that's a beautiful confidence. throw to Hicks Pool yeah. right there, and uh, uh, Hicks making the good catch there. We really miss Willie Gauthier, you know, because of the the academics where he, he uh, fell a couple of tenths short. There's Eric Lowe making a big catch. But, Willie Gauthier was on the sideline. He'll either get a, an appeal and get eligible, or he'll redshirt and be back next year, and all of our receivers will be mm -hmm. back. So we hope the best for him. And here's John. Should have thrown that flare if you saw Marquis Stupid side. I yelled at him, but it's hard to yell when a guy does that. <laughs> you know, but he didn't do the right thing, but he threw a touchdown pass. And so a little bit of showmanship. Got to be careful because that's a celebration. Uh, and we've got to be careful there. But Eric Lowe uh, making a big catch. Our defense, look at him just wad up the run there. Uh, again, the key is that when it's a run down, stop the run. When it's a pass, rush the passer. And, and uh, this is not the uh, starting punt, a, too. No, this no, this is our resting point. There's a little halfback pass. Watch this. Boom. Jason Bray kicks it up. Brad Ware uh, uh, makes the interception and uh, went from homesick to interception in a college <laughs> game. And so Brad, I'm sure, is feeling a lot better and more comfortable about being at Auburn. Our cheerleaders are doing a great job. Joe pitching the ball. There's little Marquise Cooper. Again, the speed there is what makes it hard to stop. And you take a defense, get them tired, then put in fresh legs. Oh, boy. Uh, and, and it's, boy, it's like it a different magnifies thing. it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, and you'll see right here. Watch this. Now watch him split these two runners right here. Boom. Ooh. And it's all over. And that's what's what you, what you, what you had to add on to a, to a Beasley and a, and a Hines Tucker and, and a Rusty Williams and McLeod and, and a Sincade Pennington and Kelly Embry. It's a great bunch. Did you get a chance to uh, speak with uh, Coach Jim Twinney? Well, uh, Jim Twinney is a, is a great friend of my family, and uh, he's one. He'll be his, he'll get his 200th win this year, and this is uh, unfortunately one of his toughest losses, I imagine. But yeah, you, if you're Fresno and you come to Auburn and take a game, you got to risk getting in trouble with the humidity and the level of, of talent in the SEC. They took a chance, and hopefully they'll they'll get better at their place. But we played what like we needed to play. We'll look ahead to the SEC opener in just a moment is to take that on the road to Ole Miss. That's right. Come back down to earth tomorrow. Practice hard. A much better Ole Miss probably because, again, they will be prepared for the things we're doing offensively. Uh, their quarterback, Paul Head for Birmingham, is four straight wins, two last year, two this year. They've got confidence. We've got to take this and, and move from it. It's going to get tougher all the way through. Uh, you have young guys. Lots. You still have a lot of young guys who've made progress, but on the road is is different in the sec that's right i mean you're going into into uh, oxford it's going to be a hot 11 30 game and how are we going to respond to the to the to the different field the different atmosphere it's going to be a big opening conference game for us and we always have tough games with Ole miss okay the auburn network is on the air saturday morning at 10. Uh, we invite you to join us for the auburn football preview on saturdays around the state we will be looking ahead with the Auburn assistant coaching uh, coaches toward uh, the Ole Miss game, and then, of course, be back here with us on Sunday for the replay. We thank you for watching. We'll see you next Sunday. Insurance. He's got, he's got each other. Alpha Insurance. The following is an Auburn Network production. From the 31, Ole Miss runs a play, and that pass is intercepted at the 30, 35 down this near sideline to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, and racing into the end zone with the deflected pass is Jason Bray. Touchdown! From the Auburn 24, Head's going to throw. He's going to throw long in the end zone. This one is going to be intercepted. That's a great win. You, you have a game like that, 
And the first thing you do is you look down and say, God, it ain't the way I wanted it to happen. I wanted it to be so easy. Men, ask yourself, there's a few men out here, did you think that it was going to come down to your play to win the game today? Did you think it did? Some of you didn't know that, did you? Some of you are out there playing defensively. Y'all had people hurt. You had people changed up. It can come down to any person on this team. It can come down to any person. Every single man has to respond. Today, we had to have some people jump up and step up. And we came through. We learned some things today, men. A little chink in the armor, but it's still armor. You saw a little chink in the armor, but it's still armor. Now, men, we, 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 didn't, we wanted to be undefeated going to LSU, didn't we? Didn't we say that? We had to be undefeated with LSU. But well, we're undefeated, and we got LSU. So let's relax, enjoy the night, celebrate, and dadgummit, we start working on LSU at home. National TV, and get us back in the hunt. And welcome to the Auburn Football Review on the road, on television, Auburn 45, Ole Miss 28. Like a good novel, Coach, a good beginning, a good interesting middle, <laughs> and a great ending. Well, don't, don't you sense that the fans finally said, okay, let's get the seatbelt on, the yeah. season is here. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's exciting, it's scary, it's, it's, it's thrilling. We've got, it's going, it's, 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 I'm ready for the, I'm ready for LSU. <laughs> You know, the thing that you feared, that Ole Miss could control the ball, happened and, and, and got you in trouble for a while. Well, I mean, they did exactly the things we thought they would do and were very good at it. They pressed us on defense, blitzing and press man coverage, tight man. Offensively, dink it, throw it around, misdirection. Keep first, 28 first downs, 28 first downs with good uh, short passing game uh, and uh, moving the football. But at the end, the speed of our offense, uh, the, the, the defensive style, came through and were able to win a tough conference game on the road. I would think that that you can take that and, and use it. I think so, definitely. We had people put in situations that uh, we weren't sure they were ready for. We got a little three-quarter to four-quarter ball game where we had to have a little apprehension, anxiety, a little nervousness because it was a tough ball game. Uh, and we had to come through with big plays. So we saw some big pluses out there. Uh, and again, I think every, every game, whether you play as good as you uh, should or not, you can grow from it if you learn from your mistakes. Let's go in the dressing room now and talk to some of these weary players. I told them, um, offensive line, like the last two drives, no matter what the score was, the game was going to be won at, at that particular drive at that moment. The game be won by them. They um, did a good job of blocking. Fred made some tough runs, and, and we got it out in the end. Um, you know, we're coming close to the team right now, and I think that was a sign of maturity. We had to run the football in the late going to win the game, and you ran the football. Yes, I mean, you know, our starters, you know, picked it up, and uh, they all played a big part, and, you know, when it, when they number was called, they, they produced, and they kept laying the ball up, and you guys kept going and getting it. Yes, sir, we worked on, we worked on um, press man all week. Coach knew they was going to give us press man, so we worked on it all week, working on our swim technique, getting off the ball. And, and the quarterback just got the ball, and we had to go up and make the play. Oh, yeah, we finally got a few things worked out that, you know, we were able to to get on top of, and we just kept on running the ball and stuck it down and played smash football. I was just in the right place at the right time, you know. Coach put us in them positions every every play, and uh, I just capitalized on that. It really helped us on defense, so they had the momentum going. So I really enjoyed that one. Had two picks today. Finally got that pick for six. Yeah, I, I think it was been a long time coming. You know, I had a couple chances in the first two games, and I really felt I was supposed to have some uh, interceptions, but I'll take them in the SEC game. Yeah, we learned a lot. You know, it showed, you know, it showed a lot of guts out there today. You know, this team, you know, it showed that we're on the uprise. We're learning and a lot of heart, you know. And you know, I, I just had to come back and show the guys, you know, I, I just couldn't let them down like that. First SEC game, different field, different team. You know, they play, you know, play a lot of different stuff. And, you know, we had to play a lot harder this time. We came back to the sideline. Each time we got scored on, we just say we got to get together. You know, if they don't score, we win. So uh, it was an ugly win, but we'll take it. Start uh, at Vaught Hemingway Stadium, Oxford, Mississippi. What a nice day with a little hint of fall in the air, Coach. It really felt like football season. It's a beautiful weather. Tiger Walk. Well, I tell you, our, our people I tell you, had a great Tiger Walk there. Uh, we see our fans. Uh, we had we were able to get the buses. Cheryl's out there. I tell you, if my Cheryl put up with you all week. So. My shoulder doesn't hurt me near as much as it hurts her. You know, I got a pain <laughs> in my neck, and she says she's got a pain somewhere else, which is me. <laughs> and. Uh, 
but hopefully it'll be less. There's our, oh, there's Coley and Ralph, my oh, security boy. people. And it, it was a beautiful day for football. The defense, you know, defense was right on schedule. Three and out, three and out, four and out. Uh, and we scored 14 points. And we'll see later on. It starts out so well, but just like games, great deflection. I think Shannon Suttle deflected the ball at the line of scrimmage. Uh, we're shutting down the run. And... Uh, uh, things are starting out. You can tell the players came ready to play, but Ole Miss came ready to play also. And here's the first big um, uh, break for us. Nice punt uh, to Boris Fisher. Make the play. Watch the, watch the move right here. Nice job. I think that Kevin McLeod uh, mm -hmm. wrapped it, popped the ball, comes out, we get the ball back, and the defense uh, or the punt team gives us the ball down the 22-yard line. And then when you play this press man, I call it the tight man coverage, uh, that's what can happen right there. You've got to be able to hit the one-on-one -on -one deep takeoff route or they will beat you bad. You, people that remember the uh, Alabama-Miami National Championship game, the same style that game that beat Miami is the style that we're seeing a lot of. That's why you see big wide outs in the SEC. That's too. right. And there's a good defensive play again, forcing uh, uh, Ole Miss to go east and west, sideline to sideline. I do think with our defensive speed, Martavius Houston, big stop there with our defensive speed that we can force people to go east to west we'll beat them they'd like to slash us we're back on offense watch Jamie again making a Whoa. great move there where they have him sacked but he finds Carson Bailey on the, on the little sideline <laughs> to keep this second drive going and again uh, um, in the no huddle situation as fast as it goes uh, as long as you're scoring points it's, it's not uh, uh, it's good for your defense we'll find later on where you don't where you don't score points where it kept the defense on the field entirely too long Hicks poor Again, making the plays. There's dang it again. A beautiful soft pass. Mm. This one to uh, Carson Bailey. The other one was to Robert Baker. Yeah. This one to Carson Bailey. And uh, now we're up 14 to nothing. And at this point, you sense we might be able to put them away as the defense again. East and west. Identical tackle. Ricky Neal jumping in after Martavius Houston. But the front four, the defensive line, forced it wide. And now here comes a good hit on the quarterback. Beautiful throw, but... Uh, Andre Roan missed the ball. Now they've got to punt again. But in a game where individual uh, plays can change the flow or the personnel of the game, Robert Baker here making a good run. Yeah, trying to make something happen. But keep the ball tight. Don't lose it. They come over, strip him. Good defensive play. Mm -hmm. And boom. Otherwise, he had a great day. Six he had a great day. 100. Six catches, 160 yeah. yards. Yeah. But they get the ball in the 20. But we're too, we're too loose. You've got to play the man tight. That's Tyrese Williams' first start. He played a little, little nervous, played off. But here's a case where you'd say, give up three. Give them three, don't give them seven. And then they come right back. And then the offense goes three and out mm -hmm. and puts them on the field at the 50. We, we put our defense in bad field position two times in a row, and it cost us 14 points. Mm -hmm. And they, they stuff it in the middle there. And so, again, we're now into a ball game, and uh, um, I think sometimes when you score points and all the hurry up, you get you get lulled into sleep, and everything's going to be up, uh, be different. So we're we're in for tight ball games this year. Good hard run by Fred Beasley. I tell you, every time you think you want to see the juke and all the flair, you got to have some power, and Fred combines that beautiful deep ball. Watch this beautiful. He throws such a pretty deep ball. Of course, Robert, who has great body control, jumps up high for about a 50-yard reception there. And so immediately, and I think this was an important drive because yeah. they had tied it up, yeah. but you, you grabbed momentum and brought it right back to us. He's six um, for six. Jared Holmes is six for six. At he's just been marvelous. But here, and, and again, here's the defensive play. Good play by uh, Marcellus Mostella. And on second down, you'll see the coverage tighten up, and we're seeing some of these things here that we used to see all the time. And this is a deflection. There's the deflection. Ryan Taylor leads the way for Jason Bray. And now immediately we're up by 10 points again. And for the rest of the day, as much as we worried about the game, we always were able to maintain that 10-point cushion. And I think that was a big, big defensive play. We had a chance to get more just here at the half. Well, they tried. They got they got pushed back here. And uh, Actually, at this point, you want to run the clock out. Well, then well, you get the ball. <laughs> that's right. We're, right now, we just want the clock to go out. But then, then they, take, they, get, they kick a 53-yard field goal attempt and miss it. We get it back. And it was really the first mistake I thought we, we coaches talked about it at halftime. We blew a, a timeout here, would have got us one more play for a first down. But Damon makes another big play and gets us all the way on their side of the football. But we only had six seconds left. They could have still used the clock a little bit better. Probably could have got us one more play. But Kicking at a 53-yarder, but a not, not a good exchange. Well, the, the holder fumbled the ball. He, he can make a 53-yarder. I really feel good 55 and in with him. But the, fumble, the holder uh, fumbled the snap. He could not get the ball off. And so we go in with a 10-point win. 
but it was a good finish. You know, the last two minutes of the second half and the last two minutes of the game are often the most important times of a game. Mm -hmm. That was important to us. We'll be back in just a minute. See at Jordan Hare Stadium, be sure to pick up a copy of the Auburn Football Illustrated Game Program. In addition to providing all kinds of features, game information, even an Auburn football crossword puzzle, this Saturday's issue will also include this great-looking poster featuring linebacker Marcellus Mosteller. The Auburn Football Illustrated Game Program voted the best football game program in America the past two years. So you get your copy and enjoy the free poster this Saturday. Busy weekend for the LSU game. First of all, don't forget about the Spirit of Auburn Festival taking place this weekend at Beard Eves Memorial Coliseum. It starts Friday afternoon, will continue through Saturday. Make your plans to enjoy the Spirit of Auburn Festival. Lots of fun. And we also invite you to join our radio broadcast team for the Tiger Tailgate Show, which originates live just outside Jordan-Hare Stadium near Plainsman Park. Jim Fife, Paul Ellen, Charlie Trotman, Quentin Riggins, all the guys there, along with lots of great guests and some great tailgating food, compliments of Ziegler Meats. The Tiger Tailgate Show, it starts at 5 o'clock right after the Tiger Walk. Coach Terry Bowden, the second half turned out to be a lot more interesting than you would have liked. It sure was, and somehow I think it might be helpful to us. A, bit, a game where you have to go right down to the wire, learn a lot of things about our football team, but it's a big W. And we'll be back to see that second half in just a minute. Make a good choice for the uh, Alabama Power Player of the Week, and as you know, the Alabama Power donates a thousand dollars in Robert's name each week for the Player of the Week. Well, we appreciate them for that. But you know, we 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 had what we called a Baker plan last week. We didn't get the ball to him, and we thought let's have a Baker plan and underline the plays that go to him. We underline the right ones. I think Saturday. And he really responded. Let's get into the second half now. This is uh, this going to get pretty pretty interesting, Coach. Well, too interesting, but again, my credit to, to, to Ole Miss, they did a great job at Jason Bray. He really uh, uh, thrives on big play. He wants the ball to be thrown at him. I think that's the confidence that Coach Oliver talks about, and a lot of times the young freshmen, even the backs don't have it, want the ball. Uh, to Tyree, so, I, mean, I mean, Tyrone Goodson making a big catch there. The ball was supposed to go to the outside. Uh, Damien saw that they were leaving the inside receiver uncovered, threw it to the inside play. He does some things that, that, that I'm not even doing. I not even know... I didn't think he could do it. Damien mm. did a good job. That's not another fine throw. They're just doing a good job. You've got to play the big receivers tighter because they're not going to run deep on you. Chris Mangum does a good Boy, job. Boy, a good pressure there. Boy, uh, Antoine Nolan out there right next to Brad Ware. Brad Ware had 10 tackles. Uh, Ryan Taylor, 10 tackles. Uh, defensive backs really put to the test. There's nothing but freshmen and sophomores out there. Fred Beasley, big run up the middle there uh, and uh, picks up more powerful yards. The lineman did a good job. We ran the ball well. I thought the... Uh, uh, Pass protection was better than it was against UAB, but still... This is a big-time play here. Well, Coach. when you can throw the ball to your left and throw it full speed like that, it's, oh, you can really cause some problems. They they blitzed, he checked out, uh, hits a big play, and now instead of them having a, 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 a sack on us, we have a touchdown. It's 31-14, to 14, gets us back in the hunt. There's a tough little one up the middle that uh, oh. Ole Miss began. We begin to get tired now, uh, our defense. Offensively, we were scoring very quickly, and mm -hmm. so defense would be on the field for a long period of time and then have to come back on. Beautiful little uh, 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 crackback block. They block on that pass thrown behind the line of scrimmage. That one hurt us right there, and they just did a good job. And again, they would not quit. They mm -hmm. keep fighting back, but we keep responding. Here's the onside kick that they, boy, I tell you, that was scary. It didn't go but nine and a half yards. Oh, boy, it was close. And so it's our ball. But if it goes ten, they get it. And they, boy, they, really, they were really trying to win that game the way they could. But then the offense comes right back, gets the tight end in there. And let's, say, let's just line up and go. And uh, you'll if see If you get where one more score, if you get ahead uh, two touchdowns. Now here's field, a big third run one. Off. Watch Fred. Gets hit in the backfield. But hits that corner. Got much better speed than people think. And takes the end zone now. I'm to Ed, just when every time they come up with something, we come up with something more. And a uh, very fine block job of blocking there and running and, uh, uh, again, back up 17 points. But you'll see again. If you could have held them here, you would have run the football and run out. Run out the clock, game. right. Yeah. But they continue to make plays. And, again, our young defensive backs have got to understand there's a, there's a tackle. He, he grabbed me by the head and tackled by the head. You're not allowed to do that. There's, there's their court. Paul Head of the best state of Hills did another good job. One official said no good. The other said yes. Uh, I'm sure if, it, if he said it, I'm sure it was good. So it's just, just a one overruling the other. But again, you've got to cover those receivers tightly, and that takes confidence. A young person doesn't quite have as much, uh, and that'll come with time. But now you're afraid to turn the ball over, but you don't, you don't throw the ball down here. You run it. 
and uh, and and three and out. This well, is the time that your defense has got to really maybe the biggest play out. of the game right here that finally finished it off. They sack him. He drops the ball. We go scrambling for the football. Marcellus Marcella, always in the right place, jumps down there, makes the big uh, fumble recovery. Mm. Prob that the play that finally finished it off mm. for good because now we power drive him again with that tight end. Look at that nice little move by Damian. I mean Eric Hines Tucker. And uh, mm. boy, a good move right there. He Breaks just, back against tired that's people. That's right. We, we just got a few of them to run, and they get they have to face one, then the other, then the other. And uh, I mean, practice what? seam right here, and There's it's all the over. Seam. There's the seam. North south running. Mm. And again, that eye formation allows you to go run first, pass second. The three wide out eye formations, pass first, run second. So it all goes together for a good team victory. And appreciation to all of our great fans that there. Our fans are there the whole way. They're trying to finish one more time, and I think Antoine, yep. no one intercepted, intercepted uh, at the at the goal line and finished it off right in the end zone with our fans. We had a great group there. Uh, Tommy Tuberville is doing a fine job at Ole Miss, and again, uh, four years in a row we've been able to beat them. And and, and mm -hmm. I tell you, you, you've got to get out of Mississippi uh, alive to have a great season. When you go to Ole Miss, it's always a battle. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee it. It is a battle. We'll be back in just a minute as we look ahead to the first really big game of the year, LSU. All right, this Saturday, 6.30, Jordan-Hare Stadium. This is the one that the folks buy their season tickets for, because oh, one of them. The drama, the, the pressure, the, the bigness of the game, it'll be a carnival atmosphere, and I know our fans will be there and, and, and will we'll do their part, because the fans will be a big part of this game. The, uh, the home field advantage that we need, that 7 to 10 points, that I think LSU has when they're at their place, We've got to have the fans involved, so I'm excited that we're going to have to have a good week. And being a West Division game, it's, it becomes even more important. That's right. That's right, because now uh, LSU, Mississippi State, Arkansas, Alabama, this one has all the, the impact on your divisional race. And again, so we're going we're gonna to prepare knowing that it's a big one. Glad it's on television for you. If you can't make it to Jordan-Hare, we'll see you next week with the replay on the Auburn Football Review. Thank you for being with us. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. Production. A pivotal third down situation for Anthony Wright in Carolina. Going to load up the shotgun. Slot is to the right. Both ends are split. Wright taking the snap, looking to throw with some time. He got it. He fumbled the ball into the fumble. Yes! Somebody knocks it away, and I believe Auburn got it. Yes! Auburn football! Somebody knocked it away as he was pump faking. It was Leonardo Parson. Now they go two wide out to either side. Craig's back to throw. Craig, will he run? Yes, he will. Got some room. Ten. Craig to the five. Craig, he's in! Touchdown, Auburn! Yeah. One, two, one, two, three, four. Four Eagles are down to They don't come any sweeter than that. They don't, they don't, they don't. The game does not uh, give you a chance to show the courage you showed today. I mean, where, the, the, to do what you did today, to never give up, you, you got, we got, we got so much out of that. I mean, as disappointed as we are in the offense the first half and the defense, you couldn't quite get yourself settled the second half. What a great courage game. A great courage game. Now, we're finding ourselves. See, man, you're not young anymore. You just got old. After the last two weeks, you just got old. See, what happens when you're young and you have a loss, it affects you. You think about it, it affects you. You lose your confidence, you lose your courage, man. You're not old, you're not young anymore. You're old. You're veterans. And we're going, we're going, we are going to dag them take that game and take that in the bank. We're going to take that in the bank. So we're going to find ourselves in that game. And man, that, that, that's something. That's going to be, that's a special one to you this year. is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Terry Bounty. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. A terrific football game yesterday, Jordan here, Auburn 28, South Carolina 24, and for a guy with a stiff neck in the press box, it must have been pretty exciting. Well, I tell you, it got me too excited. I think I'm gonna be on the sideline now after my doctor saw how much he jumped around, but- I heard but he had to sit you down a couple of times. A couple of times, but uh, <laughs> you know, again, we can, we can analyze and critique, and we've got some things to correct, but dadgummit, we saw Damian win one in the last two minutes. I think every great quarterback's got to do it. Overcome to, his frustration. Yeah, great job. And, yeah. and the team really showed some growing up. And uh, I'm afraid we're going to have a season. We're going to have a few games like that. I can see it coming, but the key is to win them. 
And when the Tigers did, let's go to the Auburn dressing room now, right after the game. Well, it was just uh, the right call at the right time. Uh, I think they didn't expect, you know, me to get the ball in, and uh, Coach Brown had the confidence in me to call the play, and I caught the ball. And the first time I thought I was going to get a, a good punt return, I thought I was going to break it, but somebody tripped me up. And the second time, I, you know, I faked right. It went left, and then I cut it up the seam, and it was, it was there for him. And barely I ran that guy to the goal line. Yeah, I, I'm glad he gave up before I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all I was thinking when I when I saw the ball release, I was like, man, I can't drop the field. It was so pretty. <laughs> and I, when it stuck, I just ran in and zone laughing. If there was ever a time to get on a fumble, that was it, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, you know, I was just in the right place at the right time. I was just out there hustling. You were around the late. quarterback, though, when it happened. That's what's important. Yeah. And holding them on that last drive was pretty nice. Yeah, it was uh, it was sweet for us as a defense. We've been struggling all night. And, uh, we just came up with the big play when we needed to. www.aunetwork.com Chilly, windy, and cool at Jordan Hare. CBS had to love this football game, Coach. I tell you, I see, you're thinking about every TV game. I wish we'd win them all, but we don't always. But every one we get on, it's last minute game. I mean, last seconds. And this one was, I guess that's excited. I, you know, I hate to say it. You, offensively, it was like Vanderbilt 93, uh, and that we just couldn't get things going. Uh, From this poor beginning, uh, the fabulous Baker boy had himself quite a game. So that was the point. I actually said there, or, or Rodney Allison said, that's it. He gets one more shot, and we're not going to let him fumble and return anything anymore. And, of course, that tells you how football is. There's Damon again. Early on, uh, offensively, we tried to run the ball. We couldn't run well. We were uh, not we were not sharp. And uh, you, so you don't know why that happened. We've got to correct it, but we kept plugging. Boy, that's disappointing. A, a blocked punt, you know, in four years, uh, this, it, I've been at Auburn, that's the first blocked punt. We had a drop punt uh, in 94, but that's the first one. We've really got to make sure we don't get uh, too many young guys in there that don't know what to do. Mark Smith, oh, he sort of almost made the tackle. I should have known. Brad Scott plays my dad. That was the trick play they opened up against Michigan with in, uh, about eight <laughs> years ago. Big TV game on the field. They're going to do it. That's a great play. We've made a great play. Mark Smith has 14 tackles. Martavis stayed home on that one. Martavis had, I think, 10. He did a super job. Staley, a fine back. Mm -hmm. Fine back, South That's Carolina. Uh, best game by far they played. Their, their people, gonna, they're going to be unhappy, but they've got to be proud. Defense holds. A big drive, defense holds. Uh, no points. And again, when you're, when, you're, when you're struggling offensively, defense holds, defense holds. There again, we held on a little too much. Get rid of the football. And... Uh, uh, but we've got to correct those. You'll see the second half. I thought we scrambled better, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see uh, all through this game where South Carolina individually made so many great plays, individual plays. Well, you they know, were that, really ready to play. They lost to Mississippi State. The quarterback did not have as good a game, and, and we thought, well, he's boy, a big pressure game. He really came through. And uh, that's why I say these guys, they make plays. There's Mark Tavis. He had two tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, eight tackles in the field. He's really done a week in and week out, does a great job. Their quarterback, again, watch the touch he throws on this one. The tailback makes a super catch. We're in place, but their guy's doing good, too, you know. Sometimes I want to yell at our guy, but maybe you ought to say I, they both did good. In this great containment here. Quarterback looks like Damien, doesn't he? Yes, he um, does. really does, and he has a lot of style. Uh, unfortunately, he's going to be around the next year. Uh, and doing a good job. and He had such a poor game against Mississippi State and comes back on the road for the first time and has a great game. That really said something about that, John. Well, they did good. Like I said, and I thought, uh, well, boy, I tell you, a good tackle there. Uh, uh, Jimmy Brabaugh was banged up a little bit but looked okay in the dressing room. A good tackle by him. And again, uh, boy, good Ooh. big league hit by Martavis Houston, again, as the leader there. And a lot of fresh. You know, the, the sad thing is, eventually, I think we've got more freshmen playing this year than last year. Third and four coming right here. Now, this is a big play because of the play that follows it. Knock him back, knock him back. I mean, we knocked him back backwards. There's the kill. Uh, he was banged up a little bit in the fourth quarter. Still had uh, double-digit tackles. Uh, big punt here. We were about to take Robert out because he, he fumbled the ball, but boom, don't do it. <laughs> Players make plays, and beautiful. Everybody's hustling to make a block. Change his direction without slowing down, and now it's, it's like Robert said in his interview, who's going to try to not give up the last, but who's going to run out of gas the last? Mm -hmm. And the other guy, watched the beautiful move. I think his talent comes and watch him change directions here without slowing down. Right there is just a quick change of directions that he's got a very good smooth stride and it's, uh, it's one of the things that he's got natural ability to do. Uh, great effort, but he again, 
One of them was going to give out a guess. You could see them both. A lot of running there. And, of course, we made a mistake here. You know, we had five or six people come off the bench and should have been a 15-yard penalty. I'm talking about guys that aren't playing. Mm. And uh, they'll catch it now because if that's a 15, it puts them in good field position. Because we, we're, not, we're not getting a first down. And there's there another fake reverse. There's a clip there. I don't know why they missed that. And it seemed very obvious. But they get us for a personal foul. I think they're going to say 31 helmet first. I don't think he meant to. He started, but the helmet went down first, and we can't have that uh, happen. Uh, beautiful tackle. Ricky Neal led the team with tackles. I think he had 14, and Mark Smith had 13. But Mark Smith, a big day, but Ricky is just playing so well. Takiyo would be back that, but there's, look at that. You'll see those guys get around that ball. Antoine Nolan getting to the ball, a true freshman. Played linebacker uh, fourth quarter, uh, 170 pounds of him because... Kia was hurt, and we had to put uh, uh, people that cover the pass. Marquise there, good little run. That was probably our longest uh, running play of the game, about 13 yards. It's called a pass. Mm -hmm. We had terrible rushing yards. That Those two shuffle passes would have been more. Fred, good hard run. And, boy, every time we ran the ball, he had to run through people and over people. And uh, um, Watch this play now. This is a, this is this is it. We're, right, we're supposed to throw a, a hitch. Well, this is the job where the quarterback says, I'm going to scramble, make something happen. He waited for Goodson to break his route, go to a deep route, and there's a he can throw on the run. I tell you, it's better he he's throws falling field. back when he throws this. And ball. he's got such a beautiful style. All I could think of, please don't be overthrown. <laughs> uh, but again, the wind was blowing into the ball. He laid it up perfect. And what big plays? I'd hate to tell you what the time of possession was at this time. Uh, you, you you know it, but now don't uh, look at the stats. That's right. The point is, you're up 14 to seven into the wind. Jared Holmes, you know, the great thing about Jared Holmes, that's what I tried to say last week. I think people misconstrued that even great players have off days. Mm -hmm. So, a big interception there, fighting for the ball. Uh, good play there. You got, uh, I think, Ron Taylor and mm -hmm. Dan Evans, who got his first block. Almost had to tackle backfield, but right there to fill in. Good gang work there and tackling. And a lot of work there. So, at halftime, we go in 14 to 7. And we'll be back in just a minute. second half and things get tight here in the third quarter and you uh you sat down on your team at half didn't you yeah i really did and we did not unfortunately we were having some problems and it didn't correct them but i think they understood what we had to do because you'll see guys rise to the occasion mark smith again putting pressure highly thrown ball there good coverage almost intercepted brad ware and jason bray you see them out there a lot too uh a freshman and true sophomore uh, uh, that's a big play here big this play they drive. faked the screen to right through the screen left Every step, you just thought stepped out of bounds, but again, that was a big one. They come out of the dressing room on an away field, blew the ball down the length of the field, mm -hmm. and scored. We come back after this, you'll see, and don't. Again, the quarterback scrambles. Once he gets open, he's going to find an open man mm -hmm. because defenders will move off their coverage and mm -hmm. to the quarterback. Can't do it. You've got to ask somebody else to make the tackle. But we come back, and you'll see us right here. We get one quick, we get a quick move around the sideline, plus a, plus a uh, face mask, get a first down. But then we, uh, I think we get stalled yeah. off the bat in that first pass, series. Yeah. Uh, in that first series now. And again, here's the, here's the one mistake Damian made again. Well, uh, interception. Guy was covered. Probably should have thrown away. But again, uh, Damian was 11 for 18. I think got sacked twice. We sacked their quarterback three times. But really... Uh, at, um, at this point, he could have gone in the tank. I but, really but I think I fought I, through his frustration. That's, well, that's well I say I was so crass. That's right. He decided he was going to go out there and find a way to move it and, and motivate this team and lead them and get them excited. But here we are now. We're just fighting and fighting because we got a game where they have tied it up now. Beautiful route. Not missed coverage as much as a very difficult route to cover. Uh, deep flag route underneath the takeoff. But we covered the rest of the day. Uh, come back. Uh, work hard to stop him and, and, and uh, tackle him there. And defense really tightens up at the end. But uh, they come he back He makes now. a great individual play here. What a play. What a play. He just, again, that's a very tightly covered guy. And again, their quarterback, uh, you have to take your head off. He played very well. With hit, the, hit the very uh, tough passes. And now we've got to show if we have the courage, the guts to come back. If we're going to be that type of team. Again, they, they clog it up a little bit better, but we've got good field position uh, to start the drive. And this is where we've got to start making things happen. There's a critical. We go for it on fourth down. Uh, that third down, That's we go back. One, and there's there a third and one, and boy, they they do have about the best short yard goal line defense in the conference as far as what they sell out. They totally sell out. If you tried to pass it, you'd score probably. But that's they they're smart. And, but we come through, get the last six inches, and, and you know the game's on the line. If you miss that, one, you probably got yourself in trouble. But you got to do it. There's a big play, Todd, Jesse McCovery, big catch. Uh, uh, Give him a, it's kind, of, it's kind of not a trick play, but one of those that catches people off balance. But boy, it was a tough catch. Did a you great don't know job. his situation. 
Uh, be out possibly a couple of weeks. But there's Dave and Damien starting to scramble again, mm -hmm. starting to say, I got to make it happen. Boom, gets up there tight. Nice run. Watch the power run there. Good fun, about four yards. We're down to the four yard line. As the quarter ends, Auburn's going to score on the first play of the fourth quarter at the other end of the field. Well, what I was saying, they sell out. Watch their corner. That's a cornerback right there. And you know when they do that, if, they, if you're going to do this, you're going to score. But people are afraid to do that a whole lot. It's, it's, you, get, you take a loss. And so you knew it was going to be there, but you don't want to do it. Vital they, extra point. Vital extra point now. It's tied up, and we have a ball game now. And we're, I don't know if we're in the fourth or close, but it's, it's, down, the fourth, early it's, fourth. it's down the wire now. It's which team's going to, going, to, going to be there to the, to the end. They make a couple of first downs uh, on, on this series. I had several of my friends. In fact, get the field goal. Friends, some of my friends are saying, when it, I, want to, I want to tailgate at halftime. I'm not sure we get, we get a lot of tailgating at halftime. I hate to say it. We gotta just try to go out and find a way. There's good. There's Mark Smith again playing well, putting vital pressure on now, uh, as he made it made pressure again. Look, there's a there is again putting pressure. This is a great play they have, mm -hmm. and that they execute. It's a pass behind line of scrimmage where they can block downfield. They stop them a yard short of the first, so they have to kick the field. Well, they, they really hurt us that play. They did a great job. There's the field goal. They make it. We're not going to be all offside. You see us get. We may not block one for a few weeks, but I'd rather us uh, get there. Now here we go. Third and nine. Big play, curled to, uh, to, oh, and you know, you just know if he can just spin quick and they miss a tackle. Great big play there. Another third, third and nine. six coming here and you come up short on the swing pass. Yeah, but they force you, really, you don't want to take that pass. They want you to take it. You need to hold the ball and go ahead and throw downfield if you can and wait for the other to develop because they, they kind of show you that one early. And on third down, you have to learn not to take it. You had no uh, idea about going for it on fourth and three there. No, didn't. No, I really, I, I mean, it's, it's not a good call. Time. Not yeah. a good call. Too much time, and uh, you're down three points. You're down three points, and there's overtime. Yeah. And so, really, it's really not a good. I, I don't think it is, and uh, and it turned out not to be. But you kind of get impatient. But don't you don't want you don't do that. All right, this brings up a third and six. Now, watch this third play. Third and six. Here's Mark Smith having the best game of his career. I, I think. Oh, he just play after play. There he comes. Boom. Great play, Renato Carson. That's why you don't go for a four three. You get a play like that. Even if you hold them, they punt to you. And now you're talking about not tying it up and going for a field goal to get the uh, tie going to overtime. The defense puts you in position to win the game. Look Here's a run. power. Look at Fred. His best running of between the tackles. He is a great between the tackles runner. Uh, and shows right there with spinning and, and turning and getting the yards. And now you got. Now this is where a player makes plays. Watch this for you. They block well for him. He sees it covered. Boom, he doesn't care about anything but scoring a touchdown, and they just go, boy, I tell you, you know you're young, and yet, but that's kid, they celebrate like kids. I love it. I do love it. 3.30 to go, you got to hold them. Oh, and this is tough, because you got, I, you got to count the people. There's that great play they run. Mark Smith running down the field. Uh, and Brings buddy, up a fourth and eight, sir. It's fourth and eight, and here it is. I mean, you got, you, if they make this, they still got a minute over a minute left. If they can make this pass, boom, there's the play right there, and the game's over. And uh, I'm gonna tell you, it, it's uh, it's too much for my neck. I think that's Tom, Tommy about Tommy finding out right. when you win. That's a pretty good walk. <laughs> when you if you lose that one, it isn't a very fun walk. But Dad, uh, uh I don't ever try to get too unhappy when you win a game. You're These right. things are too lost. Penn State, Michigan, they wish they were in our shoes. But we got to correct some problems. And we'll be back in just a minute. The following is an Auburn Network production. Single set back for Cerner, third and about five. He'll take the short drop. He'll fire over the middle. Pass is juggled. It is going to be intercepted by Auburn's Brad Ware. Just came into the game. Racing to the 30 to 20. He's through the 15. He's dragged out of bounds over on the far sideline at the 12-yard line. Third, a yard and a half for Damian Craig. He'll go with the three tight ends. He'll go with the back eye. Toss sweep to the tailback. Racing off the right side. Planning in as Rusty Williams. Touchdown, Auburn! <laughs> Great team effort. Great team effort. Defense holding the seven. Offense go out there and control the ball, run and pass, and put points on the board and run that clock. Kicking game. The only thing we did wrong had a little penalty. A penalty. We'll get that one correct. I mean, that's a good win there now. That's a great win. We come back homecoming next week. We're in a hunt now. I mean, all we're doing, we, we, we control a little bit of our own destiny, don't we? We control a little bit of our destiny for the future. 
I don't know if you, uh, you now you young guys I don't know if you realize now how imp how important it is for us to keep our eyes on the top prize and make sure we understand how important that is. So dang it, these next ne these next ones get bigger and bigger. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review with Coach Terry Bowden and a big win over the Arkansas Razorbacks uh, Saturday night at Jordan-Hare, 28-7. to 7. Coach, uh, I know you try to do that, but every once in a while the mix is almost perfect, and I think it was that gun near perfect. Well, it's kind of kind of win we had to, we had to have. It was per perfect mix of run and pass, regaining the confidence of a very good quarterback of ours, defensively with all the injuries, throwing almost a shutout, one, one, one touchdown, uh, uh, and having a physical game with a team that wanted to be physical. And uh, this was a really important victory for you because this is a reverses a trend that mm -hmm. people were worrying about last year. That's right. We lost to Florida and then come back and, and, and uh, Arkansas lost last year. Mm -hmm. We lost them at that in a game that we had to win to get to the back of the division. So, again, at least we saw there's no patterns there in regards to the rest of the season. But we've got a long way to go. Beating Arkansas means we're better than Arkansas right now. But we've got to get better every day because the people down the road may be better than Arkansas. Yeah, they very well may be, and we'll go now to the Auburn dressing room and get some comments from some of the players. You had some good plays, some big plays running out. Yeah, I wanted to put some pressure on the defense. I don't feel like I have been doing that the past couple of weeks, and that'll help my offensive line out a lot, and that'll slow the pass rush down if I'm running when the lanes open up and making plays. So I wanted to make an effort to go out and do that tonight, and I think I did. We heard about their defense, man. They got the best rush defense in the conference, but you know, First of all, it started with the offensive line. They did some good blocking. Then I read the fullback's block coming off him. Got an open field, going downfield. Even the wide receivers are throwing good blocks. So it all worked out. He made he made a great scramble. I mean, he came out and got arms. And I went down there and just sat down there. Got, the ball was really supposed to go to Gordon Shea, but I just went and sat in the end zone and um, he found me. Hey, welcome back. <laughs> oh, I enjoyed it. Enjoying it. Some big catches tonight. Well, yeah. Um, Beginning of the game, I had broke down some plays, and I just wanted to come back and um, come back in a positive way. So, uh, I mean, the ball was thrown my way, and I had to catch it. We tried to uh, establish the running game a little bit better than we have in the past. We tried to set a little tempo. Uh, all week long, we was thinking they was going to come out and play us real physical, so we tried to get that physical attitude all week long, and, and that's what happened. After that first uh, score, when they come out and move right down the field, what would you think? They kind of, I get a kind of surprises on it. How they came out, how physical they were, so with it, settle down, you're ready to play. I do anything right now to help the team with the injuries and everything. Um, we short in alignment, so I know I knew I was gonna have to play, but I didn't think the injury was gonna come this quick, and it did. And now I gotta get ready to play. We just knew we had to step it up a notch and do what it takes to win the ball game. So I'm glad we got a victory and we stopped them. A lot of young guys are going to have to play the rest of the way up front. Yeah, uh, we just got to face it. I know we're young, but we just got to face that reality. But uh, we're going to get right, hopefully, next week. Get all the young guys a lot of playing time, experience on practice and everything. And we should be right by Northeast Louisiana. Yeah. But... Hi, Mom. Saturday night in Auburn is a really nice place to be. Coach, I'm trying to diet a little bit and I walk through the tailgating and smell all that <laughs> barbecue. Oh, man, that's bad. Yeah, our, our tailgaters, <laughs> they've had to uh, uh, worry about games too much tailgate fun. <laughs> that's right. And looks like the folks are having a good time uh, on the sidelines last night. Uh, night Great games crowd. have their own special thing. About it's it. really, we play early games all at night and then with TV we play some, most of our late games at night. It's a lot of fun. We had a great crowd. It wasn't all the way sold out, but uh, it was a sold out study, but anybody show up, but it was great for the cold as it was. And we, we thought we might be able to break that, but did a good job. We got it out in, in decent field position, and it's interesting. We have a 12 to a 15 play 15 drive, play drive and get no points, but we had some penalties, had an unbelievable amount of penalties, but there's a big third and like 17, we get 20 or 20, we get third 22. And 22 yeah. We get 25, that's right. And you almost get afraid to try that because you no interception, but we have a huge drive here. So here's the, they called a, uh, intentional grounding, but I thought the pullback right there, you can see the pullback right there, they throw the flag, but I guess the official probably missed that, uh, uh, lost it down, brought the ball back, and, uh, but we, we, we did move the ball, because what hurt, we put them down the seven yard line, they, they do about a 93 yard drive here, yeah. but if you look at Arkansas all year long, they run an option, they run a zone play that really cuts back, they've had huge first series plays, a drive, almost every game, uh, but they don't hold on to it as you figure it out. That's a good job. Uh, Martavis Houston right there. 
you know, I sit there on the sideline, I'm saying, who's that guy we put in there? Who's that guy? I, there's so many young guys going in. Then we put, of course, the nice run Russell Williams. We were able to make the run with a pass. And again, when you don't see the run, it's not because you don't want to run, it's because you're not passing well enough. Because it must all mix together. Good little job by Damian there of, uh, of running around the end as the uh, defensive lineman. Got out of his lane. I think uh, Arkansas was working toward on rushing the passer, and you saw us holding uh, too much that they left lanes open. There's the, wor the worst call I think I've had since I've been at Auburn that disappoints me because it was such a poor, poor call by an official out of position. And I don't usually, I don't ever complain about officiating. That one was, could have been very critical in the game. You're right. Down yeah. seven nothing. Give them the ball on an incomplete pass. Mm -hmm. It uh, seemed to ignite the defense, though. Really did. They came through, and that really uh, came through and dominated. It was a good tackle by Ricky Neal. And Chris Kakuma, boy, a guy out of Montgomery that, that we hate to lose to a team like ours, but he's going to be a fine player for him. There's the deep ball. We go up there. Probably could have intercepted, but we jump in. Two guys going for it. Uh, big play, and we just they just followed their turnover with a, with, a, with a great defensive effort to get us back in the game, and we'll start moving that ball now. Midway of the quarter now. And here's a drive to get to. This is probably the first big play, about 20-yard ga mm -hmm. gain. After the, after the change of possession, and I think Willie makes two big catches. Here's a little short catch. He makes the very Actually, next play. Three, yeah. Makes three in a row, but this yeah. is, yeah, that's right. And here's the big one here. Takes about eight, nine yards. And uh, well, they tackle so well there. But this we're getting after it. Third and six coming here where he makes the great uh, Oh, yeah, he's, a, he's not the catch. primary receiver. We're trying to throw it out here in a flat. He can't find him. Damien looks back, finds him coming through. A low, hard ball. He goes and catches it about knee high, diving off, and keeps the drive going. And obviously he's excited. They don't let you dance like that anymore. So there's a good run. Watch him break out. Good job by block by Fred Beasley and mm -hmm. uh, Jesse McCovery and Tyrone Goodson at the uh, point of attack. And and uh, Russell Williams shows some good outside running ability. Fred was blocking against an all-star linebacker there and uh, did a real good. Mark job. Smith with that, their their linebacker Mark Smith did a good job blocking our defense. This little cutback play they run. Their backs were very very tough physical runners. There's a group there doing a good job of, of now closing in. Third and six. Playing well. Third and six. They set, there's the pitch on the quarterback. Big play. Ryan Taylor and Marcavis Houston playing right there. Two sophomores. Third down. We hold them. They have to punt it. We come back and score a minute later. Really change it from seven down to seven ahead with 14 points. Nice throw here. Beautiful throw. That's the pass we threw against Alabama last mm -hmm. year on third down. It brought us back into the game. That's a little fortitude to make that turn. Yeah, you got it. Yes, you got to catch that ball knowing you're going to get hit. <laughs> and uh, we got some things going now. Damian made some out, outstanding. There's a little play, play to uh, Goodson in the flat coverage right there. And uh, their young secondary, that's, they have, they've had a hard time with their young secondary. They're, just, they're like us, playing a lot of people. And uh, there's a little fa Damian Craig. There's no question he's going to run that football now. He may have thrown it, but there was no question he could see that goal line. And uh, well, like he runs it like a running back, which we try to say, Damian, uh, go ahead. We, we need to utilize your running skills with the passing skills. Because uh, he's such an accurate. He was 12 for 18, 66, but he was going all the way to that goal line and uh, really gives people fits when he runs that, that ball. That was a big passes. score. That was a big score because it didn't come very much before the half. Mm -hmm. No, and then this is the big defensive stop here. They take the drive all the way down the field. Really could have changed momentum back to them, but the defense tightens up. Mostella pressured him there and yeah, made him throw that ball That's forward. right. The great pressure by Mostella. Uh, in and outside, probably a, a throw that the quarterback tried to make. Good coverage. We force them to a field goal, and they miss it. And we go into the halftime in half with momentum, not them getting them in the front. And having overcome the very poor start and uh, gotten the lead by halftime, which was very important. Back in just a minute. Let's get in the second half now. You have to really be proud of the defense with a patched-up defensive front, yet they come out and they give you the big turnover here to set up the game. Well, the, the momentum that's going out the first second half, the first series, what's going to happen in the first series will dictate the flow of the second half as much as anything. Doesn't always guarantee it, but it really sets the tempo or the tone of the second half. Uh, defensively, uh, instead of seeing a huge drive, seven minutes, six minutes, whether you score or not, we see that two plays in the second. Mm -hmm. I felt this would be the turning point. Good kick coverage. Off. Good kick coverage. Well, you know, he didn't kick all. He kicked some of them out, but the one he didn't kick out was so high mm -hmm. that we had better. It was better than kicking them out. So we're in really good shape. I just assume kick them out because we don't have any chance of something happening. But they were great coverage. And again, defense swarming to the football now and doing a great job of uh, getting excited. Of course, the T.O. is excited there. You see Charlie Rose playing a good bit of Artavis Houston. Here Every, comes the pick. Here's the pick. Uh, really good throw. The real quarterback makes a nice throw. There's this Brad Ware, right place, right time. Good block there by Dan Evans. And uh, 
Good people trying to get in front of the center's board. Got the ball down to 10, nine yard line. Nine yard. You give, give the offense ball nine yard line. We ought to go get a score out. You can have throw on first down. Cross them up a little bit. We had the first down. You know, it's the one down where people don't know if you're going to throw the first down. Third down, of course they know you're probably going to throw. First down, but it's really a run. It's, a, it's kind of a run throw. And we're hoping he get outside and run it like he scored last time. Mm -hmm. They pulled him up. He found his second receiver, which is the backside receiver coming across. Mm -hmm. And I'm real, real pleased with the, uh, the way Damien handled that. Then there's still a nice little move by Russell Reed. But, uh, toss sweep for the one and a half yard line. He really got, got everybody to miss. Good protection and blocking uh, by the offensive line. McLeod had a good block inside. Yeah, McLeod fullback's doing a great job of, uh, of, of, of blocking and, and, and supporting the offense. Offensive line, we had a lot of holding. Boy, there's a big, there's... Brad could have got another one in. He was all he's he just doing a great job as a true freshman, along with Rodney Creighton, a true freshman, Marcus Washington, a true freshman. Mm -hmm. All these guys are playing. Uh, uh, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, well, <laughs> it, it, it is. I, I sit on the sideline, and, and sometimes I think if the, if the people in the stands knew what I knew, or could hear on the headsets what Bill Aller has to do to get these guys lined up sometimes, it's scary, but it, it, it's amazing. So there's a nice less play for Fred Beasley. The trap, he put the trap back in. He had a great success running a trap in high school at the Lee High School in Montgomery. Uh, we put it back in the offense. We've got to get a little bit, we're trying to get some fullback plays back involved, and uh, Fred was injured, but now his great scramble. This is what really hurt the team. They had us to a long yard. Damien scrambles for a first down, uh, and watch, he'll do it again. I think the very next uh, uh, three plays, uh, they hem him up, and I think he scrambles again. This is supposed to be it right here. I mean, mm -hmm. this is one they feel like they got everybody covered, and if you don't watch him, he scrambles for another one. Gets mm -hmm. down, they Slides into the defender to save his protected body. That really tears up your defensive scheme when you got a quarterback that can hurt you like we, that. Well, you know, we took over on, our, on like our 5 or 10. We didn't get the first. We just got the 50. We ran off about six minutes off the clock, up by 14. Big play by the defense. And I believe we stopped him right there. Boy, good defensive effort. Stop him right there. Force him to a punt. Uh, defense just getting excited. And uh, now we're in the fourth quarter. Yeah, now I think we come back and get good a touchdown. Yeah, get, get a good, get touchdown good field drive. position and move it right down. Yeah, there's boy, the guy at the back swings out, finds him a hole. Good, good running there. Uh, picks up good yards. And the offensive line and, and the backs working together. Uh, tight ends got back involved with the offense a good bit Saturday. Second and fourth, 32. Really good, good solid run there. He's fairly upset with himself. Philly feels like they blocked well enough for him to break something. I think we get down the field. We need a field goal here. I'll make a poor call here. This is a call. Probably, I tried to call it off. Because what you do is you get sacked, you lose field goal possession. Mm -hmm. And he just makes you a great coach when he does that. You know, <laughs> makes you a good play caller uh, when he does something like that. Because he, he gets the, he breaks the tackle. This is after he broke the tackle. He throws so well, rolling to his left. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's uh, done that several times in big plays. That's he's right. That's rolling right. right uh, left and throwing across his body. Well, good thing. You've got to understand, the receivers, don't stop running your routes once uh, Daniel starts moving around. Defense now with a 21-point uh, lead. Uh, yeah, 21-point lead, and that boy has a good sack. We've needed sacks, Marcellus Mar Pacella. Getting a sack there. He's had a couple of pressures. Their next Nel series, middle look. Middle Nel Nelvin Owens now. on the sideline with Bob Lasavita there. Guarding the sideline. Good defensive tackle there. Bernardo Carson, fresh and making a good stop there. Is that is that Ezell Powell there? I can't tell. It looks like number nine. It looks like yeah. Ezell. Yeah, Playing some is, football. Yeah, That's a true there freshman there. Playing some football. True freshman, Rodney Creighton, making an interception. We were out of play. He's running back to get in position. He's so excited he can't stand it. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of the strangest team. That's guys. 18 interceptions on the year. Oh, I think team. we're leading the nation. It's, this yeah. team is it's so young, they're really hard to get a feel for, but they get excited. Uh, nice run by uh, Marquis. Got fresh legs. We, we used Rusty a lot now. A tired defense. Fresh leg tailback. He really is making things happen to run that clock and make the first down. You really want to score every time you get a chance. Brad, keeps them off the field. Brad Ware will be able to tell his grandchildren about the day he had two tipped interceptions. Two tipped there. interceptions there. That was tipped by Haven Fields, number 54 there at the linebacker spot. A freshman tipped it to another freshman. These aren't red tipped freshmen. And, uh, and I'm glad. You know, we talked about the freshmen. Of course, Danny Ford uh, got a young team. The only team probably as young or younger than us is Arkansas. But the key at Auburn is, don't, when we talk about youth or injuries, there's no excuse to use it. Auburn, I think, for losing. You may lose a game, but... I think even in years where you have a lot of youth or injuries, you still must go out there and win a lot of ball games to keep your program going. And we'll be back with a final comment. In motion is Baker to the near side. There's the snap. Rolling to the right is Craig. Craig looking, looking. He's in a lot of trouble. Reversing his field. Still in trouble. Throws a pass. It is caught. It is caught. It is McLeod at the goal line. And the two-point conversion works. Third and goal. Here is the give. And hit. Behind the line is Rickard, and he'll lose a yard or so. Rolling to the right. Damien looking, looking, shoots a pass upfield. Good. 
to Cooper at the 45 to the 40, 35, 30, down the near sideline, and Cooper goes out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Here are the Tigers trailing by three. Inside of two minutes, out of the eye. Give is going to be to the fullback, breaking away as McLeod needs a block. He's going to spin to the near side. He's at the five. He'll go in the corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Auburn! Boy, I don't know, you don't know why the, the game went like it did? When we, we, when we had to have it, we went out there and won the game. Uh, days when things don't go right, man, you just, you just got to go out and win. It was great. The great finish. I almost say great finish. There was plenty of times to just get to, to quit. There's plenty of times to say, well, it's not our that man, but you kept, kept coming back, kept coming back. That, that, that field goal stand last drive in the defense will be, will be well, maybe the biggest series in the Degum season. That, that holding them to a field goal that last drive Chris, was, uh, was unbelievable when things ain't going right. And you do that. And offense going, taking it right back down, getting you seven. Now, now we got we'll correct about three quarters of the problem. But man, let's 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 go ahead, let's go ahead and take that victory and take it to the bank with us now. Uh, and and get focused on four quarters for Georgia. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review on a day rife with upsets in the top 25. Auburn has to go 70 yards in the final two minutes, 50 seconds of the fourth quarter to avoid one. Coach, what, a, what an afternoon. Well, I mean, maybe that's not what you just have to accept. It, it was a day of upsets, and we don't get upset. We go on and get a victory because we didn't play well. We weren't ready to play. You know, uh, I've got to find a way to get these guys understanding. Every play is the, like the last play of the game. But, like you said earlier, in a day of upsets, uh, big and small, the guys came through, won the game, and we can now hopefully play a game against Georgia more like the way we played against Arkansas. If you can, uh, if you can get four quarters out of them like that uh, final nine minutes yes. uh, yesterday is what you're looking for. Well, I, you know, the thing that I think all of us are seeing right now, it, it's so unpredictable how to, a bunch of young guys together, I don't think you, ha you, can ex you don't know what to expect from them. And again, uh, I'm glad the way we finished. Talents there. They played. They played at the end like it was urgent. But, but again, uh, we're going to have to find a way to get these guys focused and do a better job of that. But you know, Georgia and Alabama, these type teams, they grab your attention. And so, um, let's be excited about the win and just see if we can find a, find a way to, to to overcome the slow start. Let's go to the Auburn dressing room now, right after the game. That was my first time in a situation like that. It was three minutes left, we were down. And uh, I've been waiting a long time for that opportunity, and uh, I just had to keep my head and stay relaxed. And I felt confident in my offense line and my receivers that they would get the job done. And we were thankful just to get the touchdown, not a field goal. There was nothing on the left, so instinct just brought me to the right, and I just took it on in. Man, that last drive was a thing of beauty. Yeah, we had to do it. We had to. We didn't. We won the game. Stay healthy again, too. Yeah, it's nice to be healthy. I mean, it's, it's most of it's aggravating. You know, you want to get out there and you can't do it because you got aggravating pain. But sometimes you got stuck on the door and that's about it. What do you think about your young guys? They probably grew up a lot today. Well, they well, last four, five. They grew up again. a lot. Uh, they made a lot of big plays out there for us. Uh, you know, you just pay, see the older guy make a play, but uh, just out of nowhere, you see Isaiah Powell making plays, Leonardo. You know, it was great for us. We just had to, had to uh, step it up that play, you know, and, you know, everybody got fired up for the play. And we knew we had to make something happen. And, you know, I just gave them all, and everybody else gave them all, and it came out so positive. You are officially now a veteran at <laughs> No, not really. I'm still a freshman. I got a freshman. I got to do a lot of growing up in a short period of time. Yeah. And, you know, today was one of those times, and I... Went out there and did what I could and got a little pressure on the quarterback and the other teammates got sacks and hey, it all worked out for us. That uh, stop was the biggest thing in our season right now, you know, as as far as us going on. Uh, it would have been a tough loss if we had a loss to this team, you know. They played well and uh, we just weren't, we didn't come out focused and ready to play. We took them lightly, but in the end we won, so, you know, it was a great win for us. the uh, first half of play a beautiful afternoon for football a game that uh, you expected to win uh, without a lot of trouble but coach this time of year with limits as they are uh, teams that uh, have some depth problems in certain areas can get in trouble and and, and that's part of what happens to you. yeah it, it, it happens to everybody but this did not happen because uh, uh, of the talent level so they give us the ball there's a turnover early in the game um, and you'll see two things. You'll see how the, the script starts to unfold. 
There's a turnover. Uh, and we take this next ball down. You say missed the first one might have been too easy, huh? Yeah, see, you take, we take it right down. There's the running. Boy, we just expected to run right over him. Uh, at the Rusty Williams gets in, and we take it down. But we had, if you all remember, we had some timeouts. We had some, we had some people not line up correctly. Uh, there was a lot of things that showed you that we weren't mentally into it uh, like we should have been about with our assignments. A lot uh, of penalties. And penalties and mix-ups and, mix and formations, and they had to use a timeout. But still, because the people were just taking them down the field, taking the ball down the field, and even and on this final play, the quarterback uh, scrambled for the touchdown right in the next play. You'll see it. Had a good rushing day. It was uh, close to 200 yards. Yeah, we had a yeah, pretty good rushing day um, uh, in this game. And Damien puts the ball right in the end zone. Now you're, 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 you're stepping up, and, and it's exactly what I thought. But here's where the, the, the script unfolded. The defense pulls a couple of turnovers or gives us the ball back a couple of times around midfield. And the offense does nothing. And from here on to just before the uh, half, the uh, the offense just was not uh, not clicking. Not I mean, there was I say, not not just didn't have them ready. And, and again, that's that's my responsibility. I've got to get Damian ready. Uh, he missed about six or seven straight balls in the second quarter. Uh, we dropped key passes. If you uh, can feel sorry for anybody, you could feel sorry for this senior quarterback. He, he had a terrific day. Oh of yeah, I mean that, that's kind of the way the day was too. They have a ball go through one receiver's hand. He tips it up, and it goes into another receiver's hands. And all of a sudden, seven to seven, and um, you you're trying to wake up. To you're trying to wake up, and we give it back, and then you'll watch a punt. There's there's a ball tipped into the hand, guy's hand. Here's a punter just decide just drops the ball, the ball right in his hands. Now to me, there's a level of again a concentration, an intense concentration in a big game that you don't relax and let that happen. But you turn the ball back over to him, the quarterback. They get it at twenty. Does a Danny and Craig down. look alike and scrambles in, and now they're up. Uh, and boy, you, all you've done, all you've done is give them confidence, make them feel they're not going to get blown out, and you start doubting yourself. And when you start getting a bunch of young guys, um, now we've got to go back down and try to get some points before the half. 118 to go when, when that play uh, you've was got, snapped. You've got to get some points before the half to get this momentum turned back around. And we had a good little drive here, and we won't show it, but we missed. He'll bring it back down. I think he'll scramble. I think find somebody late mm -hmm. uh, over here, and he'll find, I think, uh, uh, Baker. Mm -hmm. There he goes. There's time. Uh, Robert Baker coming across, and we'll kick the field goal in this drive. But what we do, we miss a what we miss a pass that would have scored. Right before this, we had an open receiver, and I think Carson Bailey on a slant into the end zone missed another one. And uh, but we got the field goal, uh, and uh, Jared Holmes kicked two field goals, and we got out of the half with some points. But buddy, I mean, you've got to you got to shake some people up right now and focusing on the urgency. And young guys don't seem to have urgency that every play has to be the one that wins, and so. You know, hopefully this was a lesson to learn about a loss. You learn lessons sometimes from big losses. Well, here was the biggest scare of your life, and hopefully they learn from it without having to lose. Back with some of the homecoming activity in just a moment. Coming queen, Michelle Chapman of Huntsville was crowned the 1996 Auburn homecoming queen. That was at halftime. Uh, the other members of the court included Melody Arledge of Columbiana, Stephanie Holden of Dothan, Robin Adams of Hoover, Kathy Waterman of Tullahoma, Tennessee. Our congratulations to Michelle and all of the homecoming court. Just a moment. Okay, we move back into the second half, and the thing that you did not want to happen happened. You uh, go for it on fourth down and stop a drive. Well, you know, we, we wanted to come out with the opening kickoff and move it down the field and score points, take control, get any idea. And here's the running again. Just like the very first series of the game, mm -hmm. getting the ball moved down the field, the, the, the toss sweeps, the, 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 the red plays are going very good. To the we, third and five, and you get the four. Third and five, getting the four. And then we run a play and miss the fourth down. And again, it, we, it was a little bit too long to run the inside play. Probably would have been better off running that old toss sweep. But you'll see we missed the block right there, the linebacker, and missed the, missed the first down. Now we've run time off the clock. We've taken that momentum that we got back with a good drive and killed it with a fourth down missing it. They get a drive going, and uh, that's the second and six of the 24. Here comes third and four. You've got to stop them here. Well, the, what, and what happened was what we were doing was hurting ourselves, and there's a good play. No, now, tipped at the line. Tipped at the line of scrimmage by, uh, looked like Marcel, Dorsey. By, by Dorsey. Dorsey, good. And with that, um, they missed the field goal. We're just leaving their, uh, by us not scoring points, we put their offense this way to their defense. Here's a big third and ten. They blitz. He hits the receiver one-on-one. -on -one. You've got to be able to do things like that to win games. That was uh, um, uh, outstanding pass and catch. And now there's a good run. There's Beasley making a good run at fullback. I tell you, we're glad to get him back in the Dagum football game. Mm -hmm. Ever since his move, he came back with an injured neck and missed another game. And now he's getting healthy again. And even in power situations, went back to tailback. 
Uh, but here's a critical fourth and third and four, a fourth and four. Fourth we and go six. for it. Boy, what a great effort there of um, getting his first down at the last minute. Uh, dry effort uh, by Damian Craig. That was Get a critical. personal foul backed you way up. One of those long personal fouls. Oh, I mean, it was uncalled for. We had a personal foul. Big catch by Robert Baker. But after the catch, we have a run for some game yards. He has a, a late block after the play is over for a personal foul. We don't go for it this time. We needed to have points there mm -hmm. after the last time we missed a fourth out. It puts us within, within one. And right now, we're just trying to find a way to get back and win the football game. At we're in the point, fourth quarter now. And right when we have to get something to happen, they get behind us not, but, uh, several times. And the young receivers, that the, the, it looked like the cornerback felt he had help in the middle, but they got over top. And, buddy, you're just kind of worried. And here's the big catch covered, but that the defender does not get his eyes around. And, boom, you're back down eight points. Now, you're down eight. if you ever worry, you see, if you're going to get up and worry and leave that stadium, this is one where you might not think we have a chance. Nine minutes to go in the game. But we had to have a critical uh, third down run, and so you stick your powers to help back back there. We've been working on this. And he goes in there and powers his way through about eight yards. And uh, the quarterback comes back. Now, there's some protection there. He sits in that pocket, waits for something to come open. And then Eric Lowe. Eric Lowe working in, the, in place of Tyron Goodson. We had to hold Tyron Goodson. Goodson, didn't you? Oh, missed you badly. The, the inside receiver route was so important to us that he is quick enough to handle. Uh, he wasn't there. But here's Damien throwing a quick play to an uncovered receiver. We had a play that they didn't cover. And got our man right back into the end zone now. But we have to go to two to tie this thing up. If we could tie it up, we're thinking, let's tie it up and get the thing into overtime. This is all ad lib coming on this play. Yeah, well, we had a play. We had number 21 was probably the first three we were supposed to hit. He was covered. Then we had a bunch of other ones out there. The last guy in the world you'd think would have open is the fullback who was supposed to block. And he backs it right in. And we get the tie-up score because right now you're thinking, the first thing we must do is get the thing into overtime. Mm -hmm. Because we'll hold, we're, we've now got it tied up. They'd have to score again uh, to hurt us. But... As you'll see, about two plays, they're right back down our one yard line. They catch a third and nine here that was just amazing. Well, this is amazing. This is the second pass they had one. They were on their backs up with a third down play and hit it. This is the second one they hit mm -hmm. on third down. And but now it is there. They are on the four yard first line. First and goal at the five. They go to the one on the first play. And now watch the next two plays. Second down and third down at the goal. Line. Here's two big critical plays. The first time quarterback sneak, he gets turned back and rejected. And now that they're trying to get the touchdown, all they got to do is score the touchdown. That almost forced us into a chance to tie the ball game. Great job there by uh, first a jo Charles Dorsey underneath and Martavius Houston over top. Uh, and we forced him to kick a field goal here, which ultimately ended up being the deciding point in the game. Great penetration there with uh, Carson and Brumbaugh and uh, even Ezell Powell. Well, that's a bunch of young guys, but now we've got to bring them back. There's the guy, there's him throwing that Peter pass before the sacker, the, the blitzer can get to him. And he throws it right on time, a great job of hitting that route to, to Gauthier. A little bit of pressure, ten. but you got your quarterback that can scramble. He scrambles just enough to hit that. There's the screen. We had a screen set up. There's the, there's the, the, the good run by uh, 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 Marquise Cooper. No room for error now. No, First you're 10 at the 25. You've got to go down now. You get a chance to win the game here. And you want to throw it, but you don't want to throw an interception because a field goal wins the game here. Mm -hmm. And so you got to be very careful with Damien Scrambles for seven more yards. Field goal ties it, and then you go to overtime. That's right. Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry. Field goal ties it in the, ten, in the day of overtime. You've got to remember that. Mm -hmm. But there's Beasley now in a tough yard. He goes back to tailback, does some good power rushing. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's just so much of a need for all these backs and the certain styles that they have. And, uh, 12-yard um, gain there. Here comes the big play. Boy, there's one where they came and over. And Quarterback gets a block. Boy, I tell you, a good little help there. And there's Kevin McLeod reversing the field and making something happen. And, you know, you worry so much about a penalty and a yeah. celebration. Yeah. It, but, it's, but it's not the planned. It's, 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 it's excitement. Now you still got to stop them. They have oh, a minute boy, 44. They're at mid, and they're at midfield. But there's a good sack by Brumbaugh. The pressure now has to come from those front four people. We watch it. They'll be really rushed hard. There's Marcellus Washington, Ezell Powell putting pressure on him. He can't make the catch. All you need to do on fourth and 12 here is to stop him one more time. There comes, there's Marcellus pushing him forward. Brumball and all the, they're putting the hands on him. And they're causing the fumble. We get the fumble recovery. Theo Spikes with a hit, knocks the ball away. And now we've got the fumble, we've got the game on. But it was, you know, I, 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 you feel sorry for them because the way they played and what they have to I don't, but, but again, our young team is having to find a way to become a good football team. Uh, this game was no different in South Carolina. We're supposed to beat South Carolina. They don't think South Carolina's any good. 
we don't get the players don't respond. First, 59 to nothing, Mississippi State. That really has got this hurt us so bad, and so I'm having a hard time getting this team to find out about teams that aren't supposed to be. Well, Georgia, they won't have any problem with Georgia because Georgia will see this game and say, hey, we'll beat this Auburn team. So they better pay attention. We'll be back with a final comment in just a minute. you're going for your 100th win Saturday against Georgia. Well, I thank goodness after Saturday it's going to be this week. But, yeah, it'd be, it, it, it'll be, it, it would be a big one. But, you know, the Georgia game is always going to be big. And, uh, um, and we got, you know, it's one of those we've got to have. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, the players, again, uh, as I was saying earlier, the big games, you know which ones they are. The player, I think a young guy who doesn't know what this whole thing's all about, they know what the Georgia game is. They know what the Alabama game is. Uh, and now we just got to go out and have a plan that will give us a chance to win. And Georgia has a week off. I'm looking forward to a packed house and some real energy out of the crowd. Well, really, I, that is. You know, the, those Northeast games are tough because all week long, no one gave them any credit. Not the press, not the fans, and not the players. And the players and read the papers. They, and, and we did a poor <laughs> job of trying to convince them everybody else was wrong. We'll be uh, back next week at this time with the replay of Auburn, Georgia. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you a week from today.